Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. So I'm with uh, Kanye here. He's, uh, I'm emotional about fonts, but not just fonts, typography as a whole and how it's beautifully designed and how it's set on a page. It can be a really powerful tool in communicating. Now, typography communicates on two different levels. It communicates on a functional level where we can identify the letters and on a semantic level where it evolves or it evokes a, a, a feeling and, and, um, and in a mood. And bad typography can be <laughs> bad communication. You see this everywhere. And I'll say this over here, you see it a lot in PowerPoint decks. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so I want to walk through some five common faux pas um, that have really simple solutions. Now, I love dressing up in costume just as much as the next girl. Uh, but there's a time and there's a place for this. Uh, and it should be used sparingly. And it's cool that the word typeface is awesome. It has the word face in it, which represents a personality and some history. So choose your fonts carefully, and it should represent who you are and your message. Now, um, this past summer, I don't, do you guys remember this letter from the owner of the Cleveland Cavs? Um, it was set entirely in Comic Sans, which is not that bad of a typeface, but just not meant for this long copy. It's as if he walked into a conference room dressed in a clown costume. Now, figuring out all these different typefaces and how to use them together can, um, it can be an intuitive thing for a seasoned designer, but for the rest of us, it's kind of a daunting task, and you can get carried away a little bit with all those fonts. Um, so some simple guidelines. Try to stick to just two or three fonts maximum, um, and a general rule is to have those fonts be contrasting. And don't, unless you're a pro, don't use more than three, and um, don't try to choose fonts that are very similar. Now on the left, you have a design that's stuck to those rules, a very clear winning message. But on the, on the right, it's a big old mess. It looks like a circular you know, flyer Sunday for a cheap electronic store. <laughs> Now, hundreds of hours go into crafting and fine-tuning a typeface. And what do we do? We do horrible things to it. We squeeze it and stretch it and modify and stick it in places that we don't, that it doesn't belong. And I'm so sorry to my friends at Bing. I say this with, I say this with love and respect. Um, that typeface is a classic typeface, and it wasn't meant to be stretched like that. You should have just used something else. Um, and do resist the urge to use word art. It's a, it's a hard thing to take text and sort of transform it into a 3D graphic. It should be done by professional. Um, another abusive thing we do to typography, and almost always uh, accidentally, is using those little simulated stylized type and they're found in the little toolbars in Word or Photoshop. So the best practice here is to use the font menu instead of the buttons. Now, good typography is more than just selecting types and stylizing properly. It's about composing all those things in sort of a harmonious way and reading really smoothly without any kind of awkwardness with you know, widows and orphans. Um, and just like music, uh, typography can be set to a scale. And this is a traditional scale called the classic one that designers use a lot. And it, those are font sizes at the top. You can select any of these font sizes together in one design and have a, you know, a, a harmonious composition. So I did this literally in five minutes. I took scale and the idea of a comfortable measure and um, tempo, which is the vertical spacing, and applied it to this usability website. <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, it's not... Yeah, earth, you know, earth-shattering design. Um, I don't know if you can, s I guess this isn't really coming out well, but uh, her dress is see-through. <laughs> I'm sure uh, she, you know, when she was at home, she was looking in the mirror, it looked fine, but she didn't have a real backup plan for her environment. And the point here is when you're applying web to, or typography to the web, you should have a backup plan. Not a lot of the fonts that you choose are on, installed on every person's machine. And how you go about this, is uh, 
selecting first your ideal type and don't make it too obscure. And your second font in that stack should be something that has the same sort of fit so it doesn't screw up your layout. And then down at the bottom of the list, you have a cross uh, platform classification of the font. Now, I'm leaving you with just a few of hundreds of resources. Some really cool things are going um, on about uh, font at font face and cool font linking services. So check them out. Thank you.